Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Wednesday, December the 16th. Today is an Ember Day. Um, if you've read the church newsletter, you learned that the Ember Days are uh, three uh, penitential days of fasting and prayer that fall on the Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday of roughly the beginning of the four seasons. This past Sunday was St. Lucy's Day, uh, which is the indication for the winter Ember Days. So we will add uh, an extra collect this morning in morning prayer, and as well as uh, we will pray the litany, which we do on any anyway on Wednesdays. I apologize for the poor video quality. I've got to use my terrible uh, built-in webcam this morning, so apologize for that. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, the Lord comes to save us. O come, let us worship him. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Rejoice greatly, O Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the judgment written. This is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Rejoice greatly, O Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Our Old Testament reading today is from Isaiah chapter 32. Behold, the king will reign in righteousness, and princes will rule in justice. Each will be like a hiding place from the wind, a shelter from the storm, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of a great rock in a weary land. Then the eyes of those who see will not be closed, and the ears of those who hear will give attention. The heart of the hasty will understand and know, and the tongue of the stammerers will hasten to speak distinctly. The fool will no more be called noble, nor the scoundrel said to be honorable. For the fool speaks folly, and his heart is busy with iniquity, to practice ungodliness, to utter error concerning the Lord, to leave the craving of the hungry unsatisfied, and to deprive the thirsty of drink. As for the scoundrel, his devices are evil. He plans wicked schemes, to ruin the poor with lying words, even when the plea of the needy is right. But he who is noble plans noble things, and on noble things he stands. Rise up, you women who are at ease, hear my voice, you complacent daughters, give ear to my speech. In little more than a year you will shudder, you complacent women, for the grape harvest fails, the fruit harvest will not come. Tremble, you women who are at ease, shudder, you complacent ones. Strip and make yourselves bare and tie sackcloth around your waist. Beat your breasts for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine, for the soil of my people, growing up in thorns and briars. Yes, for all the joyous houses in the exultant city. For the palace is forsaken, the populous city deserted, the hill and the watchtower will become dens forever, a joy of wild donkeys, a pasture of flocks, until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field, and the fruitful field is deemed a forest. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness abide in the fruitful field. And the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness, and trust forever. My people will abide in a peaceful habitation, 
in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. And it will hail when the forest falls down and the city will be utterly laid low. Happy are you who sow beside all waters, who let the feet of the ox and the donkey range free. Our writing this morning is from the Solid Declaration of the Formula of Concord, Article 1. Original sin is like a spiritual poison in leprosy, as Luther says. It has poisoned and corrupted the whole human nature, so we cannot show and point out to the human eye nature the human so we cannot show and point out to the eye human nature by itself or original sin by itself. Nevertheless, there is the corrupt nature or essence of the corrupt person, body and soul, the person himself, whom God has created. Original sin dwells in the person. It also corrupts the nature and essence of the entire person. And there is original sin which dwells in human nature or essence and corrupts it. They are not one and the same thing. For example, in outward leprosy, the body that is leprous and the leprosy on or in the body are not one thing, properly speaking. But a distinction must also be maintained between our nature as created and preserved by God, in which sin is indwelling, and original sin, which dwells in the nature. These two things can and must be considered, taught, and believed separately according to Holy Scripture. Furthermore, the chief articles of our Christian faith drive and compel us to preserve this distinction. For instance, in the article of creation, Scripture testifies that God has created human nature not only before the fall, but that it is God's creature and work also since the fall. See Deuteronomy 32.6, Isaiah 45.11, 54.5, 64.8, Acts 17.25, Revelation 4.11. We join together in the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare all the dying. From all sin, from all evil, from the devil's might, from the devil's wiles, from your wrath and from hell's torment, from sudden and evil death, good Lord, deliver them. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help them, good Lord. In the hour of death, on the day of judgment, help them, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord, to comfort all the dying, to forgive them all their sins, to lead them out of this misery into eternal life. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. 
O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, leave us not to bitter death. Lord, have mercy. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, allow us not to lose hope in the face of death and hell. Lord, have mercy. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, keep us steadfast in the true faith. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Give us the faith to behold the majesty of your presence in simple words, simple water, and simple bread and wine, as you come to us in the very body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.